Okay guys, so here's the thing. Federal Reserve just announced a significant 0.5% interest rate cut in September. Further rate cuts are expected and that's gonna affect all businesses of all sizes, including the Magnificent Seven stocks. So the key question is, which Magnificent Seven stock is gonna be the best buy as rates decline? See, here's the thing. There's three key ways that lower interest rates are gonna benefit the Magnificent Seven. Three key ways. Number one, you've got reduced borrowing costs. Lower rates make it cheaper to refinancing, refinance existing debt and fund new projects for future growth. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you're gonna have increased customer spending. Both individual consumers and organizations are more likely to spend when interest rates are lower. And finally, you're gonna have a weaker US dollar. And a weaker dollar makes US exports more competitive internationally, benefiting companies with significant global sales. All right, so taking those three factors into account, how do they affect all of the companies? Well, first of all, let's focus in on how those rate cuts are gonna impact each of the Magnificent Seven when it comes down to borrowing costs. We'll start with, we'll start at the top and work our way down. So first of all, Amazon. Amazon has the most debt in the group. They have $157.8 billion in debt and it makes it highly sensitive to rate cuts for debt refinancing. All right, then we have Apple. Apple trails Amazon with $101.3 billion in debt. They're gonna benefit from lower refinancing costs and increased consumer spending on their devices. Then we have Microsoft. Microsoft has 97.8 billion in debt. Lower interest rates are going to reduce borrowing costs, potentially boosting investment in cloud services and other innovations that Microsoft is gonna be pursuing. After, after Microsoft, we have Meta Platforms. Mid-tier debt load, they have $38 billion in debt. They're gonna benefit from increased spending on advertising, especially on its platforms. Coming right after Meta, we have Alphabet. Alphabet's debt stands at $28.7 billion. They also see a boost in consumer spending for cloud services and advertising. Very similar to previous companies. Tesla, coming in after Alphabet, relatively low debt, only $12.5 billion in debt, but significantly gonna benefit from increased consumer spending, especially as its electric vehicles are high cost purchases. And then down at the very bottom with the lowest debt load in the group, Nvidia only has $10 billion in debt, but their lower rates are going to enable smaller businesses to invest more in AI and GPUs fueling Nvidia's growth. Okay, but it's not all just debt, guys. We also have increased consumer spending. So who's gonna benefit the most from increased consumer spending? Well, I think the company that stands at the very top of this list is gonna be Tesla. They have high vehicle costs ranging from $40,000 to over $113,000 for one vehicle, and that makes Tesla a significant beneficiary of increased spending. Right after Tesla, we have Nvidia. They've got expensive GPUs that are essential for AI development, and that's going to they're gonna benefit from the ability of smaller firms to invest more as borrowing becomes cheaper. Right after Nvidia, I gotta say that Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft are all kind of in a similar group there. They've got cloud service platforms that see increased demand as lower rates boost organizational spending. Then we have Apple. They're gonna gain from higher consumer spending on their premium devices. And at the very bottom of this list, Meta, where advertising demand could grow as lower rates stimulate business expansion. All right, and then finally that last factor, a weaker US dollar. How is that going to have an impact on international sales? Well, Apple and Tesla are most helped by a weaker dollar as their international sales exceed US sales. Other magnificent seven companies like Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft, Meta, they also benefit from significant global revenue streams. All right, time, now that we've analyzed all of them, it's really time to highlight what is the best magnificent seven stock to buy amid all these rate cuts. And I think that it's uh, it's close between two companies, Amazon and Tesla. They're both positioned to benefit the most from rate cuts for different reasons, but I think Amazon is the top choice. See, with Tesla, they face stiff competition in the EV market and consumer interest in EVs is potentially waning. 
Also, their valuation is much higher than Amazon's, making it a riskier investment based on forward earnings multiples. Amazon, on the other hand, they've got the AWS cloud platform that has significant AI-driven growth potential. They've got advertising on Prime Video that's emerging as a strong growth driver. Their technology investments should enhance the profitability of Amazon's e-commerce business. They've got Project Kuiper, which is Amazon's satellite internet service, and that's another promising growth area. And lower interest rates further boost Amazon's potential by reducing borrowing costs and stimulating customer demand. Remember, they have the most debt. So, with all of the magnificent, uh, all of these magnificent seven stocks stand to gain from lower interest rates, but Amazon is the best stock to buy thanks to its growth drivers and the extra tailwinds from reduced borrowing costs. Now, guys, I got to say that I do have a stake in Amazon. I have a, I have a stake in several of the stocks that we talked about today. So I, I got an open stake in Amazon, Apple, Microsoft. I've got a tiny but insignificant. Uh, amount of stock in Meta. I don't have any Alphabet. I don't have any Tesla. And then I have a stake in NVIDIA. Um, but just wanted to give y'all that information, let y'all know uh, where I stand. So when it was a fight between Amazon and Tesla, I haven't bought in on Tesla yet just because I feel like I've never found like that perfect spot to buy for my portfolio. But Amazon, man, it's one of my favorite stocks. I got a ton of stock in Amazon. All right, guys, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe guys, because every single day I'm posting a new video about what's happening in the stocks world, what I'm seeing. And then at least once a week, I post a video usually on Mondays about a stock that I'm buying that week. Personally, I buy a stock every week. I putting my money into the stock market. I like to buy individual stocks. You get to see what I'm buying every week here on the channel. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Y'all have an awesome afternoon, morning, whenever you watch this movie.